today's ride, no actual plans, no destination. I'm just going to head north until I feel it's about time to turn around and head south again. So keep your eyes out for anything interesting on the way. That's the plan. Okay, a bit of background. The idea of an extra freezing works on the east coast was put forward in 1902. And there was a debate over whether it should be Tokamaru Bay, Tolaga Bay or Hicks Bay. Thanks largely to Sir Aparana Nata, the foremost Maori politician of the 20th century, construction of the freezing works began in 1909. Worker strikes would become commonplace. The freezing works encountered its first strike before it even got started. The construction workers walked off the job for weeks and they struggled to find enough workers to complete the project. In 1911, the Tokamaru Bay freezing works finally commenced operation. It was producing mutton, lamb, wool, tallow, and in the first season it produced 140,000 carcasses. The next year, in its second season, the start was delayed by drought. The river that ran under the freezing works was almost dry, and they had to pipe in water from elsewhere. The third season was delayed by a union strike. Maori non-union workers rose to the challenge and kept the place running. Its fourth season was impacted by World War One. There was also a massive earthquake that toppled all the chimneys. But according to locals, fortunately the bar at the hotel was intact. In 1916, there was an interesting news item that said the freezing works had to close for a fortnight due to a shortage of bottoms. In 1920, the Tokamaru Bay, Hicks Bay and Gisborne Freezing Works were amalgamated. Union strikes continued to be a regular occurrence. But the Freezing Works had some bumper years in the 30s, but later on, when farmers began to move their stock to the Waikato to fatten up, the Freezing Works started losing money hand over fist. And then World War II came along and impacted production again. In 1944, the Freezing Works was eventually sold to an Australian firm, Thomas Borthwick & Sons. This wasn't a very popular move. Strikes continued for the next few years. In 1949, the Freezing Works was only processing half of what it had 20 years earlier. Borthwicks said they were going to close down the plant. Local farmers looked at buying it, but it never happened. In 1952, the doors closed for the last time. The plant was disassembled and the assets were all sold. I want to thank Wiramu for telling me a bit about these buildings and for the work that he's done clearing the place up so that you can have a walk around and see them for yourselves. And it definitely helped turn my aimless ride into a good history education. I hope you enjoy this. See you next time.